For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, Emmanuel. So today is Trinity Sunday, the first week after Pentecost, where Jesus foretold the disciples that the Advocate would come through him by the Father. The Advocate, right, is the Spirit of Truth, or the Holy Spirit, or the breath of God that animates all life that blows where it will to find us right where we are in this earthly reality, to show us a way to experience eternal life right now. Jesus tells Nicodemus that we need to be born from above so we can see the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus takes him far too literally And he asked this funny question, well, how can we enter into the mother's womb and be born again? Jesus tells Nicodemus he's not quite getting it. And he continues to try to explain to him that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. And no one can enter the kingdom of God without being first being born of water and of spirit. Now, of course, these aren't literal concepts, but they're analogies, the closest analogies Jesus can come up with to try to open Nicodemus's mind to what it means to actualize the life of God's love in this world. And this, I think, is where the classical Christian doctrine of the Trinity is very helpful And allowing us to see what Jesus is trying to get us all to see. Which is the central truth of our faith. The concept of Christian relationship. God's primary essence. God's being in and of God's self. Is self-giving love in relationship. A relationship of self-giving love between the persons of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So before creation, God wasn't a judge. He wasn't a creator or even a power bearer because there was nothing to judge or create or be powerful over. Therefore, God's primary nature, the core of God's being is love. Self-giving, agape, love. So if God is an eternal community of love and three persons, then before time and before creation, God was selflessly outpouring love unto himself. Which, for all we know, didn't last long before God created the entire cosmos and all that it contains because this is what God's love does It multiplies. It expands. And to participate in this life-giving, loving relationship with God means we will be swept up into the wind of the mystery of the divine love that begets more and more love. So I think the doctrine of the Trinity invites us to think about our belief in God, our faith in God, not as having the exact right thoughts about God, but rather to simply be in relationship with God and all that he created. So to access the kingdom of God, to be born from above, like Jesus said, we must not only reorient our minds, of course, but also our entire way of being in the world. We must enter into all we do with the intention and knowledge that God's love is available and is alive in all of our relationships and to access this kingdom of God's love that Christ is talking about is to be 
in loving relationship. So how do we do this, right? Most of you probably saw my little mini sermon I gave on Facebook this week as a video tribute to my sweet 14-year-old dog, Boulder, who went back to God last week. God gave Boulder to me for 14 years. 14 years ago in South Bend, Indiana, I picked him up from the pound. He was the crown jewel, this gorgeous gift that came out of my very first serious relationship as an adult. And even though that relationship didn't continue in its original form, that relationship multiplied its love through this beautiful creature that God gave me. And I'll never forget going to the pound to pick up this gangly little puppy that was all ears and legs and thinking to myself, oh boy, Sarah, your life is about to change forever. I felt the weight, not only of his body, but of the responsibility to my love for him, to care for him. And my life did change. Because God poured out his love on me for 14 years through that beautiful creature. And I got to experience so much love. And most of you here know the love that animals can provide, particularly dogs. They are this overwhelming source of unconditional love, right? That self-giving love we're talking about. The love that doesn't hold out on you. The love that greets you at the door at the end of every day. It's just pure agape love. As I said in my video, I truly believe if you want to experience and participate in God's love, well, I think you should get a dog. (laughs) To me, dogs are an incredible way to learn about God's love and to participate in it. And participating in God's love isn't just about receiving the love and those wet kisses, but it's a mutual sharing of love, taking care of one another, right? It's the giving back of love. The giving back the love, not just to the creature, but to the whole world. This love that exists between two people or two beings should beget more love. And that love should be poured out into all your relationships, just as God gave the Son to pour out his life for the whole world. Same pattern of love. In other words, God's love is poured out. It's multiplied for the entire cosmos to experience and for us to participate in. So our job is to help manifest this love through all of our relationships. Our relationships with one another, our relationships with ourselves, our relationships with the earth, our relationships with these beautiful creatures. Because God has created and given us this love to experience and to give it back. Remember in Genesis, God made man a helper because he needed companionship. And then God made animals because humans needed companionship. God made man in his image, the image of a loving, self-giving relationship with the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit. And we were created in that image, in this image of a relational God. So therefore, we were created to be it. In loving relationship. And that is the point and purpose of our being and our essence. So the key to actualizing the kingdom of God here on earth right now is to be in self-giving, loving relationships. And I know I've said that 12 times, but I really want you guys to get it. Because this is not only the key to our faith, but it is the gift. It is the pure gift of God. 
The gift of God is the ability to participate in God's love through our relationships. And man, am I thankful. I'm so thankful for all the ways I get to experience God's love. God's love through you all and through my beautiful dog son, Boulder. And even the hard relationships, y'all. In all things and in all places, there are gifts. There are always crown jewels to reap. If we could just see with the loving, life-giving eyes of Christ. Because the kingdom of God is here and available wherever we go. So we can't just wait for God's love. Friends, because God's love is here, it's swirling all around. Just as the spirit is in the wind, just ready with fecundity, with joy, waiting for our warm embrace. Amen.